Ladies and gentlemen, sports legends and icons, and today we'll be discussing batting average. And we're going to take a break from top 10 of anything. Here we go. Batting average. What is batting average? In baseball, the batting average, BA, is the number of hits divided by at-bats. It is usually rounded to the three decimal places and read it without the decimal. A player with a batting average of 300 is batting 300. Batting average is a stat in cricket, baseball, and softball that measures performance of bat- batsmen in cricket bat- and batters in baseball and softball. The development of the baseball stat was influenced by the cricket stat. Who has the best batting average? The player who has the best batting average is Ty Cobb, who basically played his t- career mostly at the Detroit Tigers organization. His batting average was 336. Cobb is a 1911. AL MVP, Triple Crown in 1909, American League Batting Champion, 1907, 1950, and 1970, 1990, American Home Run Leader, 1909, American League RBI Champion, 1907, 1909, and 1911, and American League Stolen Base Champion, 1907, 1909, 1907, 1909, 1915-1917. Cobb was inducted to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1936 in Cooperstown, New York. How to find fo- the formula of the batting average. To find the batting average, you have to do is hits over at bats. Hits are the only fair ball reach first base safely and no errors or FC. Plate appearance is players turn to bat- batter's box. PA is only BB, HBB, SAC, fly. Bunt and interference. AB is only for hit out, reach on error, and FC. What typical batting average makes you makes you win a batting title? Batting a, a player needs to win a batting title between 200 and 400 or more. It does not include walks or hit by pitch. Treat all hits as equal. Average on base percentage, slugging percentage equals slash line. A base percentage and slugging percentage equals run scoring. Batting average, for example, in, in 413 at-bats, Tom had a batting average of 321. In the next game, he had three at-bats. What's his likely number that Tom will get? Suppose he hits one of the hits on his new batting average. The answer, 322. See, so we can pause it right there, and yeah, the next. Similarity to other sports. It is similar to the NBA's 50-40-90 club. Official MLB betting percentages are computed to the third decimal place, thousands, but referred to a percentage then rather than from Permalage in basketball. Who has the worst batting average? Bill Burgeon has the worst batting average of all time. Who played with the Reds and Dodgers? His batting average was 170. 
I get rid of that. Father of batting average is English statistician Henry Chadwick, also the founder, father of baseball. You can pause it right there. Which player had the batting average of 400? The player that had the batting average of 400 first season was Ted Williams in 1941. He's the only player to do it. Williams is a 19-time All-Star, two-time AL MVP, two-time AL Triple Crown, six-time AL Batting Champion, four-time American League Home Run Leader, four-time American League RBI Leader, and holds the record of on-base percentage. 482. Williams was inducted to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1966 in Cooperstown, New York. Williams is one of the best players to never won an MLB championship. Weapon you, weapons if you led the batting average. If you lead the batting average, you won a baseball or batting title. A good way to lead a batting average is to have 300 or more. You probably might might not strike a lot of times. Here, does it explain? Batting average may be the most well-known statistic in all sports. It has roots going all the way back to the birth of baseball and has remained relevant to this day. But that relevance has definitely faded in recent years. To some people, the stat means nothing, but to others, it's the most important stat in baseball. So, let's take a little crash course on batting average. My name is Bobby, and this is Baseball Explained. Let's start with how batting average is calculated. It's simply number of hits over number of at-bats. A batting average is rounded to three decimal places and is read as, for example, 315, not .315. Let's define these components. A hit is credited any time a batter hits the ball in fair territory and reaches first base safely without aid of a fielding error or a fielder's choice. At-bats are best explained by bringing up plate appearances. Plate appearance is just the name for a player's turn in the batter's box, and at-bats are like a subset of those plate appearances. There are four outcomes that count as plate appearances but not as at-bats, which are walks, hit-by-pitch, sacrifice flies and bunts, and interference calls such as catcher's interference. So what counts as an at-bat? Anytime the batter records a hit, records an out, reaches on an error, or reaches via fielder's choice. So batting average uses at-bats instead of plate appearances as its goal is to quantify pure hitting ability. And if all of this seems a bit convoluted, there's a reason as to why. That reason is this guy, Henry Chadwick. He was an Englishman who played a pivotal role in baseball's early years. Among his contributions to the sport were the popularization of the box score and creation of statistics like batting average and earned run average. And batting average was great for the time period. Most batters just tried to hit singles and didn't focus on extra base hits. Walks weren't very frequent either, and Chadwick didn't even bother keeping track of them. So the best way to measure talent was to see how many hits a player recorded divided by their number of tries. Batting average would become the most important offensive statistic in baseball, and for a very long time would be the main tool for comparing hitters. Before we talk about batting average in today's world, quick tangent. Generally speaking, a player's batting average for the season will be anywhere between 200 and 400. 1941 was the last time someone batted over 400, as Ted Williams batted 406. A batting average below 200 is said to be below the Mendoza line, named after the light-hitting shortstop Mario Mendoza, who actually batted 215 for his career and not 200. Also, anyone who leads their league in batting average wins the batting title and is considered the batting champion. Now, back to our story. Batting average doesn't quite hold the same weight today as it once did for two main reasons. One, it does not take walks and being hit by a pitch into account. And two, it counts all hits as equal. This led to the creation of on-base percentage and slugging percentage respectively, and all three stats together comprise what is known as the slash line. 
Each stat tells us something different about a hitter, and that's a good thing. But on-base percentage and slugging percentage weren't all that popular until the 1980s. And with their popularization came the realization that batting average wasn't all that great on its own. On-base percentage and slugging percentage are more correlated to scoring runs and are therefore seen as better offensive evaluators. And that's not even mentioning the newer stats that do an even better job in this regard. Just to show what I mean, here are Bryce Harper and P. Gordon in 2015. Gordon was the NL batting champ with a 333 average, and Harper batted 330. Batting average would tell us they are similarly valuable offensive players. But throw an on-base percentage and slugging, and you'll see Harper is far and away the more valuable player, hence why you won NL MVP that year. Even if there is a larger gap in batting average, the value can vary drastically. Here are 2019 stats for batting champ Tim Anderson, Mike Trout, who in all likelihood will win AL MVP, and Hanser Alberto. Again, batting average doesn't tell the whole story, and that's a good segue for our final takeaways. Batting average holds a lot of historical significance and still provides some insight into how talented a hitter may be. On its own, it can be misleading, though you should always look at more than one stat when comparing players. Even though batting average has lost its status as the most important baseball statistic, there's nothing wrong with caring about it. Just know that there are more insightful metrics out there. So I haven't made one of these explainer videos in like a month, but they'll be coming out more frequently during the off season. So hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of those. Please leave a like and share if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I hope you guys pay attention to what he said. Facts about batting average. Batting average is one of the oldest and the most universal tools to measure a hitter's success at the, bat at the plate. Batting average is determined by dividing players' hits by his totals at bats. For a number between zero, shown as zero, and one, one. In recent years, the league-wide batting average has typically hovered around 250. Top time, top ten all-time batting average. Ty Cobb is the leader of it. If you want to pause it and. Go ahead. My batting average has been good, so people ask how much luck is evolved. I tell them when I work 14 hours a day, seven days a week, I get lucky. Our, our man hammer, I think. That's it, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and goodbye.